right, the last thing we're going to talk about um, is a hotspot. And this is kind of tacked on at the end because it doesn't really have anything to do with plate boundaries. Um, it's something unique in and of itself. So a hotspot is the area on the earth over a mantle plume, but just a single isolated mantle plume, rather than a entire boundary with uh, hot magma welling up to the surface, creating a mid-ocean ridge. There's just one tiny little plume all on its own, often in the middle of a plate, not associated with the plate boundary. When this happens, when you have a mantle plume well up, to, up towards the crust, it's going to apply pressure on the crust, heat up the crust, and this causes the crust to thin and volcanoes to form right above that plume. Okay. So hot spots can occur in the middle of a tectonic plate, and they're often form, or associated with the creation of volcanoes right on top of them. Now, because the lithosphere, the crust and upper mantle, move with the tectonic plates, but the mantle itself um, re remains relatively stable, relatively still. The plume remains stationary. The lithosphere, the tectonic plate above it, moves, and this creates a chain of volcanoes as the older volcanoes are moved farther and farther away from the mantle plume. Okay? Um, we see this in Hawaii. Hawaii, we know as a chain of islands in the Pacific Ocean. However, if you were to drain the sea level and actually expose the sea floor, you would notice that Hawaii isn't just a small chain of islands. Hawaii is an incredibly extensive chain of what we call sea mounts or underwater volcanoes, um, underwater mountains. Uh, because the Hawaiian hotspot has been creating mountains for millions of years. Uh, but as they get older, colder, denser, farther and farther away from their magma source, they sink, go below the ocean surface. That's why we only see the young ghost ones still on the ocean surface, still as islands today. All right, so putting all of this information together, talking about the different types of plate boundaries, I also want to talk about the different types of coastal margins. An active margin is anywhere where plates are actively converging, actively subducting. So an active margin is a coast right on top of a convergent boundary. Um, for example, the US West Coast. Passive margins, on the other hand, are not associated with a, an active plate boundary, right? For example, our coast where we live in Georgia is not on top of an active plate boundary. At the plate boundary that we were created at is all the way over in the Atlantic Mid-Ocean Ridge, very, very far away from us because we have been moving away from it as plate tectonics move us away from that mid-ocean ridge. So passive margins are not associated with an active plate boundary, such as the US East Coast. Now, these different margins vary in shape. The active margins, they're steeper. They're often rockier because there's active subduction, active mountain buildings, whereas passive margins tend to be flatter, not associated with very many mountains. So when you think of active margin, think like the coast of California, cliffy, rocky, passive margin, um, think about flat, sandy, far away from any active tectonics.